Welcome back once again to the motorist and today um, we've got uh, some military vehicles here. Now I'm with Brian. Now Brian is uh, secretary for the Yorkshire area of the Military Vehicle Trust. Did I get that right Brian? You did, that's correct, yeah. yeah. We're a national <laughs> club, the Military Vehicle Trust um, and it's subdivided into areas so I just look after the Yorkshire area, organising events like this and so on. Yeah. So, Brilliant. Sorts. We had quite a lot of members out yesterday because it was the uh, Armed Forces Day yesterday. Yeah. Nationally, Help for Heroes. So members from the Yorkshire MVT, uh, they were out doing quite a lot of events, helping raise funds. For Fantastic. Help for Heroes, so. Well, we'll come back to uh, the group again t towards the end, and I'll probably maybe get some details, put some links in the video. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if anyone has a military vehicle or you're just generally interested, uh, then you can obviously uh, follow that up and uh, have a look at the group. Yeah. So. Um, Tell me, which one of these is your vehicle? It's one of these Jeeps, I believe. One of these Jeeps, yes, yeah, one of these Jeeps. That, that, that one's mine. There. That one's yours, is it? Yeah. So uh, how, how did you come to own one of these? Because it's not your average car that people tend to buy, is it? Um, well, I, I'm into cars. I was into Land Rovers when I was, I was young. Um, and I always liked Jeeps. And I went to Norway to buy this Jeep in 1990 because uh, they were doing ex surplus ex-army ones. That, from the Second World War, that they were NATO Reserve, and uh, so I went to Norway and I bought I bought four Jeeps, of which this is one, uh, and so I've had this since 1990. So I've had it what 32 years now. Wow! Yeah. I know at one time uh, army surplus were a cheap way to get into some of these type of vehicles. I'm not yeah. sure so much these days. No, 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 no. Well, army surplus isn't what it was. I mean, that's how I started with, with Land Rovers. Was I bought an ex-army Land Rover. Yeah. Because uh, the, the British Army used to do military vehicle sales. Uh, yeah. And, you know, old Wolf Land Rovers and that sort of thing. Well, a bit older than Wolf, I'm afraid. Series two and series three <laughs> Land Rovers, which. Most of your uh, uh, watchers, uh, readers, listeners won't won't remember, but the older Land Rovers, the 60s and 70s ones. Yeah. That's how I got into Land Rovers, which is now my business. So I, d I do that for a living as well. Oh right. But Jeep, okay. The Jeeps were uh, were always a hobby, and I always wanted to uh, to have one. Yeah. Which drove me to buy this one, and then once I got into the buying the Jeep, then I wanted to get into the military side of things, you know, looking into the military history and all that sort of stuff, which is what a lot of these are about. You'll see them yeah. marked up quite differently, uh, with different markings and different things and so on, and it's all, all to replicate yeah. what they were, in, you know, when they were in the war sort of thing. So 30 odd years of ownership, you'll know these cars pretty well now by now then? Uh, yeah, reasonably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. been a long relationship, but yeah. it's a good relationship, I still love the old girl, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still gives me a lot of fun, you know, a, a lot of pleasure driving it and that sort of thing. Uh, and, the, and the nice thing is they create a lot of interest as well, you know, wherever you go people want to talk about them and, and ask questions about them. Yeah. Uh, and, and the good thing is about the Jeeps in particular, they're, they're nice and easy to keep, will fit in a, a garage, you know. Yeah, they are quite compact and, and obviously with the, sort of a group, groups like this it's, it'll be almost a lifestyle won't it owning one Absolutely. of these? Absolutely, yeah it is, yeah, yeah very much, yeah, you know, but, but like a lot of car clubs, you know, you make friends because it's like-minded people. You know, so over the years I've made an awful lot of friends in the club uh, that we socialise with as well as, as do the military vehicle stuff as well, you know. Brilliant. Uh, but you get to do different things, you know, I've just come back from Normandy, I, I was there for two weeks, uh, at the beginning of this month, uh, for the D-Day celebrations, which for those of your uh, viewers who don't know, the D-Day was on the 6th of June, and uh, a lot of going on there you know so we yeah. took the jeep across on a trailer uh, but we took the jeep across and did about 400 miles of it around, around normandy yeah you know but there were hundreds if not thousands of other jeeps and people there so it's fantastic really good party good, brilliant good time yeah yeah well, that's great thanks very much brian has sent me down here to see adam and Gemma and this uh, rather special very very early jeep so tell us a little bit about the history of this vehicle yeah uh, well my dad bought it in 1968, it's a 1943 Ford GPW. Mm. Um, he bought it in 68 the same year I was born and it was a birth present and I think he gave £50 for it and I've had it ever since. Blimey. And it lives at home in the living room. And you were telling me off camera that it's very, very original, it's all pretty much as it left the factory? Uh, everything in the Jeep has been stripped back to as it left the factory, yes, and it has extras on it as you'll see. Um, General badge because it was a general's jeep. Uh, it has a clock in it. 
which is a 1939 GOW board clock. Yeah. Um, and it's still six volts, so we left that in it. And the yellow circle is because it was in Sicily, which yeah. was also 1943. Blimey. And that's uh, that was the history of the Jeep, so we kept it uh, as is. We didn't yeah. like, we could have taken the clock out and changed things out, so that's what we did. Yeah. And it's all matching numbers too. Brilliant, so a real timepiece then. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've still yet to find another one with original clocks in it and as factory as correct as what this one is. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's it really a is. lifetime ambition really, I suppose. Yeah. And how do you like find life with a Jeep then? Um, I wouldn't be without it now. Yeah. Um, it's very much mean to the fact that, you know, I let it actually live in our house. Um, right. But well, at least they're not too big. No, very true. Um, but it's, I hadn't been involved with Jeeps before and it's just become a real passion for myself as well now. Yeah. Um, anything to do with the World War vehicles, you know, I just think it's really important that it continues on and it's such a massive part of history. And Definitely. It done right. Yeah, there's, sadly there's a generation that are, it's going to pass by, isn't it, if we don't preserve it. So do you actually drive the vehicle yourself as well? Yeah, it's it's registered for me to drive and uh, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's, it's ours, it's family family vehicle. Yeah, and you find it very usable, manageable? Absolutely, it's, it's so easy to drive, it's literally three gears and away you go. Um, you know, yeah, it's not power steering, yeah, it's left hand drive, but it's so easy. Brilliant. Um, but it's just good fun as well. Excellent. So today's top tip, if you want something that's fun and easy to drive, uh, World War II Jeep could be the vehicle of choice. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Marvellous. Well, thank you both very much. Okay. Now, something else I've just been made aware of that I didn't know about these vehicles. So, if take you back now, it's World War II. Um, obviously, there's a real demand for these vehicles uh, for military use. Um, and Willys couldn't build these fast enough. So, um, Ford was brought in, and Ford actually built a number of these vehicles like this very vehicle here. Now, um, there are a few subtle ways to tell these vehicles. Um, it's got various components and fittings, so there's a lot of bolts, for example, that have got the letter F marked on the head of the bolt. Um, but it's not just that, there's body panels that have got the letter F stamped in them as well to signal to symbolise that this was a Ford-built vehicle. Uh, now, I'm told a lot of people do actually try and replicate some of this on vehicles now, but um, it's a real art as to know which parts actually had the F on and, and which didn't. But there were other differences as well. So things like this uh, this sort of bump, bump rail here uh, there's a piece of timber behind there that's sort of rolled on this on the willies one i'm told it's chamfered uh, this grill there's a bar behind here which again on this one it's sort of more square on the willies version that's more rounded and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg i could probably do an entire video in itself just on the differences between the two vehicles so um, obviously that's something I haven't got time for today but uh, yeah fascinating to, uh, to to discover that history because it's not all Willys Jeeps that are here today uh, I'm with Adrian who's got this fascinating uh, vehicle uh, obviously marked up as uh, United States Air Force on here as well uh, so what, what have we got here? It's uh, relatively new. It is registered with the MVT, mm -hmm. Military Vehicle Trust. It was the youngest vehicle on their register. Whether it still is, I don't know. But uh, it's a Chevy, ex-American Air Force. It was used as um, uh, a runabout at the air bases. OK. Um, it's... From new, it's been been in England. Okay. It's, it's never been anywhere else. Mildon Hall and uh, there's one other place I can't remember the name of at the moment. But um, they they were decommissioned and um, when when the, this was I'm the third owner of of this one, um, but I've. Uh, Ripped everything out from inside and made it into a camper. Okay. Camper van. I'm too old now to be sleeping on the floor. Yeah. And when you try to put your trousers on laying down, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. So, so how was this kitted out originally? And would it have been more like a, a minibus type vehicle? Or? No, it was just a plain, um, plain van. Okay. I had small windows. I've put the, the larger caravan windows in. Yeah. Um, inside is, um, I've got two bunks, um, I've a kitchen, uh, 
the basic requirements. It's a perfect show vehicle then because you can come and enjoy the show and you've got somewhere to uh, get your head down afterwards. Well, what it is, I also have a Jeep. Okay. So, um, and this is a V8 engine, diesel, and uh, it's got loads of power so I can hook a trailer onto the back of my trailer uh, with the Jeep on and it'll take us uh, take us anywhere we want to go. Yeah. And uh, it provides us with a bit of uh, luxury at, at the end of the day when we're uh, away for uh, some of the shows last three, four days. It's uh, it's our mobile uh, yeah. um, hotel. Well, that's marvellous. It certainly looks uh, a bit more exciting than your typical motorhome. So, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I've uh, I really enjoyed that. OK, no pleasure. Well, look at this interesting vehicle we have here. It's a Land Rover, but it's not like any ordinary Land Rover. This is actually an Australian-built Land Rover um, on a 110-inch um, wheelbase chassis, but with the addition of... A couple of extra wheels here. Look at that, fantastic. Obviously drives all six wheels as well. Uh, we've got a rather interesting array of uh, leaf springs back there as well. Obviously we've got this sort of drop side, uh, drop side body with this canvas top on, so that's all load area. Obviously single uh, cab up front here uh, with three seats in. Uh, but yeah, to all intents and purposes, other than this sort of bull bar and everything, um, <laughs> Pretty much does just look like another Land Rover, but yeah, Australian built specification, really interesting vehicle. Now this particular Land Rover is quite interesting because this has got a lot of radio equipment inside. Um, quite a lot of interesting detail on the outside as well, including uh, we've got the NATO spec um, side and indicator lamps. Now the importance of those is out in the field, um, you want to standardise your um, equipment for your fleet um, so that if you have to do any running repairs, uh, you're not having to stock lots of different items. And it weren't just Land Rovers, there were other military vehicles as well that all used those same, uh, those same fittings. So I have the distinct pleasure of being here with Mike and his fantastic Land Rover. Now, Mike was actually a uh, corporal in the Army, in the Royal Engineers, I believe. Yeah, 129 Field Squadron, 3 True, which was best. 1 and 2 were best at all. Uh, Royal Engineers, Volunteer Reserves. Uh, I left after about four years. Um, 3 True was stationed at Gould. Yeah. Um, then it got disbanded altogether at all, closed down. Uh, and the actual regiment itself has gone altogether now, yeah. over the years. But the last batch, which 2000 roughly, uh, went over to area okay. support, RAF support, yeah. uh, for jump jets. Right, they fascinating. Were Abroad, they were going over there and yeah. doing security on airfield and, and building yeah. the hangars for the planes to go in. Yeah. Um, and the last lot of them, I think 2006, was left of it, went into uh, ordnance recovery. Okay. And they've folded up altogether now. The yeah. Regiment, the regiment doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Which is a bit of a sad thing for all the old boys that's been in it for years, a long time. Yeah. Uh, Good to see you here That's today, though, sure. preserving the uh, the memory of it, obviously. You've got this uh, your fantastic uniform and this vehicle behind us. Now, you were telling me that so this was a, a civilian this vehicle. This civil, was a civilian one, which has yep. been militarised over a few years. Uh, been rebuilt from 2006 to 2011 when it was taken off road. Yeah. New galvanised chassis and everything. Yeah. Rewired. And... But you've actually done this now to to the specification so of... Spec of what the regiment was when I was in it. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of it, attending yeah. these uh, events. Yeah. Um, no, it's good. I mean, it, it sort of brings the history to life. Obviously, we've got the vehicles, we've got yourself and um, and a few other people here that are sort of in uniform as well. And it, it just it sort of brings the whole thing to life, doesn't it? It does, really. I mean, there's lots of lads like this group. They're all American trucks. Yeah. There's not many British stuff. Uh, 
It's just what we are. I prefer British, and that's it. That's what I was in. So yeah, of course. You know, that's how I like to promote it. You know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, that's excellent. And I know when I spoke to uh, the secretary of the of the group for this area, they actually said this is quite is a small. Brian? Yeah, and he yeah. said this is actually this is it's quite this is a small turnout for you guys. So I'd I'd love to see on uh, when you at one of the events when you've got a, a full turnout. I bet that's quite a sight to behold. Well, in, in, early on this year when we got chance of coming here. I think there was 20 odd vehicles turned out. Yeah. But with having Scarborough on yesterday, mm. today they'd already booked other little things nearer home, probably. Yeah. Or they maybe still at Scarborough and on their way back home because they've stopped overnight. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, it's a bit of a. Yeah. Poor show today, probably. No, well, like I say, it's been wonderful seeing them anyway. So, but yeah, that's great. And thanks for yeah. letting me have a look around and telling me a little bit about uh, about the vehicle and, and what goes on here. The, the other one, the, the other. I mean, this is, this is a personnel carrier, yep. so, but the other one is a radio truck command vehicle. Yeah, I've been having a look in there. I know this is a lot of equipment. Lot of yeah, definitely. But when you look at the thing, there's about 20 differentials. Oh yeah. With these things with cranes on back, welding sets. Oh yeah, they had the ambulances. They, yeah. Yeah, they had ones with. That's uh, what they've done with them. And according to Dave Mipal, with the other truck. Uh, they've just been informed now that I don't think Army's going to take any more Land Rovers on. No. Finished. Well, that is it. The Pinzanger is it? The German one that's just gone out. Mm. They're, they're keeping them. Yeah. So yeah. That's how we'll be driving German trucks, don't it? With British Army <laughs> yeah. instead of British stuff. Yeah. See that on American. Americans are a bit expensive with their gear, but right. you know they'll pick and poke and find out what's best to suit and bash it to pieces, alter it. To suit, you know, to suit what they want. Yeah, I must admit, a, a friend I have who was serving in the armed forces, and he, he did say, obviously, some of the new kit is is very capable, it's very good, but um, obviously the thing with these is okay. They may, they may break down, but the, underneath they're quite a simple machine. Um, we're one of these new things, if they go down, um, it's well, not it's not you something you're going to stick your head under the bonnet. These things is all the fancy electronics that you get on a on a, a domestic vehicle. No, it's no good. No, it, it stops. Nobody can mend it. No. No, and as you pick up earlier, obviously one of these vehicles had the NATO spec uh, lights on as well. And again, that's what's well, important when you've got a big fleet of vehicles out in the field. You know, you want that standardised equipment. You want to be able to get that vehicle back on the road yeah. uh, as quickly as possible with a minimal of fuss, don't you? Yeah, well, this is where you really me coming in it. You know, yeah. they're good lads, really, with breakdowns and stuff, recoveries and that. Yeah. Uh, they're good at the job. That's yeah. what they're paid to do. So they want it back on the road as soon as you can. Yeah. Because it wants to be front ready for front line. Yeah, of course. Well, that's brilliant. I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed that, and again, a, a great opportunity to learn a little bit of uh, history as well. So, thank you very much. Uh, so that draws a close to uh, this video with military vehicles. Obviously, there will be more videos from some uh, classic car shows coming up soon. We've got Walton and Festival of the Unexceptional um, coming up shortly. Um, obviously, there's lots of other things on the channel, some car reviews uh, as well. So, uh, if you haven't done so maybe check some of those out uh, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you very much.